Hey guys, uh, I just got back from vacation and I saw something that all the other YouTuber channels I watch are talking about, and that is the PS1 Mini. And uh, I just thought I'd get on here and talk about, I think this is a really fun idea that they're bringing back all these old systems now, just for like, you know, a little sample game to play and uh, maybe it'll get people interested in seeing the other games that these systems actually have. I know the uh, NES Classic just sold out like incredibly fast, uh, probably because they didn't make too many of them. Uh, I did not buy one of those, but I did buy a SNES Mini. Um, I have a lot of games on the uh, SNES already, but I thought I'd buy uh, that one just because it had a few of the more rare, kind of expensive titles that I do not own, and uh, 80 bucks was a pretty good deal for that. So uh, with this new PS1 Mini they're going to have, uh, I guess they're going to have 20 games and I don't know exactly what games they're going to have, I don't think they know yet either. Um, but I think that's a pretty good, you know, pretty good value if they're going to charge like 60, 70 bucks for like the Nintendo versions. And uh, I know they're having like Final Fantasy 7 and uh, I think Ridge Racer 4, which if you can hear the music for right now, uh, that is the Ridge Race of Four soundtrack. But anyway, I don't want to talk about the Mini, really. I want to talk about why I love PlayStation and uh, just some like memories I have of when the first time I played a PlayStation was. And I'm just going to show you guys like a few things out of my collection here, too. Um, the first time I got a PlayStation actually was, I believe, in high school. And uh, I was probably like 16, 17, I don't remember exactly, but I remember I had been waiting to get one until a game I really wanted to play came out. And, uh, you know, I've been playing like NES, Super Nintendo. Uh, when I was a kid, I played a bunch of Atari games. My dad had an Atari computer system and he just bootlegged the hell out of those games. We had hundreds of those games and I played those all the time. Um, but I didn't really, like Atari that much, and, and I actually started really liking video games when uh, the first NES came out. So that kind of started growing my love for gaming then. Super Nintendo came out, I really loved those games. I remember I played like Final Fantasy 2, Final Fantasy 3 just for hours and hours and hours. But after, after I played those, I remember those kind of a lull where I wasn't really playing games that much, I was probably more focused on school stuff. But then I saw the news for the PS1 coming out with the Final Fantasy VII game. And I'm like, okay, you know, this looks like the type of game that is going to be a reason for me to buy this system. And uh, man, I'm glad I did. And uh, Final Fantasy VII right here was the first game I purchased. This is still my, you know, original copy that I bought back then. And I put many, many hours on this game. And I'm sure everyone knows what this one is. Uh, so I don't have to talk about it much. But that's, that's what sparked my first purchase of the PlayStation 1. And uh, after that I was just like hooked on it. It was kind of an amazing time where, you know, we we're first getting into the 3D era and there was a lot of garbage on the system, let me tell you, <laughs> a lot of garbage games. But they made, they made thousands of games for this PS1. And the thing I really liked about it was all the companies were just trying new things at that point. You know, just throw it up against the wall, see if it worked. You know, half the time it didn't work, half the time it was a terrible idea. And, you know, you pick up those, times, those types of games today, and you're like, what were they thinking? This game is terrible. But back then they just didn't know, you know, they're just trying new stuff and innovation was just so much higher than I think it is these days with like the PS4 era, which I mean, they're great games on PS4 as well, but the, like the level of just companies like trying new things out has gone way down as far as I'm concerned. So that, that's probably like why the PS1 is one of my most favorite systems and I will show you uh, just a couple things here. Uh, first of all is the system itself. Now this is not my original uh, unit that I bought when I was 17. That one died, unfortunately. 
uh, when I got to college, you know, I've been using it pretty successfully until then. And then I said, oh, I can uh, play copy games if I put a mod chip in this thing. So I got on the internet, I forget, it was like one of these kind of, you know, shady sites back then. And I bought one of these, these chips that you, you know, install on the PlayStation yourself. And I put it in, and after I got it, you know, all soldered and everything, I tried to hook it up, and it just fried my PlayStation. It was done. You know, I, I took it out, it still didn't work, the thing was just fried. And, uh, uh, funny side story, my, my friend who's kind of like more of a computer geek than I was, he's like, oh man, you must have just put it in wrong, you know, look, give me that chip, I'll put it in mine, and, and then we'll get this thing working. I'm like, well, I don't think so, dude, it's not a good idea. And uh, he did the same thing I did. He put it in, uh, fried his PlayStation. <laughs> so I, I was pretty pissed at this point. I, I got in touch with the guys at the website somehow, and I uh, said, uh, you know, look, this chip you sold me has fried two of our PlayStations already, and I, you know, want some. I need you guys to fix it. And as I remember, it kind of took a while, but they sent me like another chip that looked a little different. And they said, well, try this one. We guarantee this one will work. So I said, okay, I'll put it in. Risk another PlayStation. And that's, that's when I bought this one. You can see it's a little, if you, if you know your PlayStations on the back, you can tell it's a little newer model. I don't, I don't remember what year I bought it, but I did put that chip in this PlayStation. And let me tell you, I'm glad I did because it opened up a whole new world of gaming for me at that point. Because uh, I could just go to the rental store, rent a game, copy it on my computer back then, and just, you know, on, on blank CDs, and this unit will play them. And still, it still does. I've had this unit ever since then, uh, you know, at least like 15 years, I'm sure. Um, and not only burn games, it plays Japanese games. So that's really opened up a lot of games to me, too. Oh, let me show you my... Uh, some of my burned games here. This is my uh, <laughs> my burn game binder book, and just like some loose discs too. But you can see, like, you know, I went to town on these things. I don't know if you can see these. You know, I just got tons of copies of these games. Um, so I don't know how many PlayStation games I have in my uh, collection exactly, but I have a lot. But I'm just going to show you some today. And. Uh, what was, what was I going to talk about? Oh, so after um, after Final Fantasy VII, I just kind of started uh, trying, you know, random games out, and I bought a lot. Um, no, I didn't buy a lot. I copied a lot, but I I bought the ones that I really liked again. Uh, you know, in the last five years or so, when I started collecting a little more seriously, and I just wanted you know have nice games in my collection. So I got like some more nice role-playing games, like Chrono Cross. Um, I, I guess these games I'm showing you are just kind of going to be like my uh, some of my f more like memorable games that I played, and maybe like some recommendations to you guys if you've never heard of them. But if you know places, you probably have. Um, yeah, so I mean, this game is a masterpiece. Uh, I really loved Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo, and I. I actually didn't have this one back in the day. I just played this one maybe three or four years ago. And it still holds up today. It's a high quality game. You know, you get tons of hours out of it. And the graphics and music are, are still very memorable. I mean, they, they put a lot of work into these old PlayStation uh, RPGs back in the day. And, uh, oh, I mentioned before I can play uh, Japanese games, and recently I've been collecting, well not recently, in the last five years or so, I've been collecting more Japanese games, just because I've kind of run out of uh, American games that I can look look for. And also, for a lot, of, a lot of times, if you see a PlayStation game that's just kind of too expensive, you think, you could often find the Japanese version for a lot cheaper. And that's true with like Parappa the Rapper. See, I got the Japanese version here. And for some reason, the Japanese versions 
the, I, I don't know if people have better care of them or anything, but every, every, buy, every game I buy from Japan, they're just like in super minty condition. It's awesome. And uh, these, these games here, these are some, some of my more fond purchases here. These are the, uh, in America they call them Busta, Busta Groove. And they're quite expensive. I mean, if you bought both of these games here, you're, you're paying over $100 most likely. But you know, I got these Japanese versions for like 12 bucks each, I think. And they are fantastic games. And you don't need to speak Japanese to play a lot of these. That's, that's why I picked them up too. I don't, I don't buy like Japanese games I can't play. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, this is the Castlevania Chronicles. Uh, this game, you know, it's like 70 bucks or whatever here. I picked it up for a lot less uh, a few years back. I don't, I don't know how much it is now. But um, that, that is one of the really nice things about the PlayStation 1. Elemental Gearbolt. This game, if you know PlayStation games, you also know it's pretty expensive. I got the Japanese version. Plays exactly like the American version. It's like $10. And, uh, oh, this one, I actually discovered more recently, maybe within the last year or so, uh, that, that's another thing about PlayStation. You just keep finding more titles that you, even like 20 years of collecting you never heard of before. It's amazing. Uh, this is Gunner's Heaven, and a lot of people say it's like the spiritual successor to Gunstar Heroes on the Genesis. And I think that's kind of accurate. Um, it's a little different style, but uh, I definitely recommend it. It's it's. One of the games that I'm surprised didn't come over here to the U.S., honestly. It's just, it's a lot of fun. You just run and gun, you know? And it's got fun music, too. I used to think Treasure made it, but I don't think they do. I, I, or they, they did. I think someone else makes it. But uh, it's, it's similar to Gunstar Heroes. So that's all my Japanese games I wanted to show you. Um, what else I got here? Oh, another thing that was very interesting on the PlayStation 1 was the uh, amount of just kind of spooky horror games that I had never seen before. I, I felt like this was the first like adult console that, like truly adult console that I, <laughs> that I played. And I mean, you had some kind of messed up games that like I'm sure a lot of parents bought their kids not knowing how messed up they were. Like these uh, clock tower games. Now, I will say these don't hold up very well today. Their graphics are kind of terrible, and the controls are kind of terrible, too. But they are so unique uh, in, in terms of just, like, what they have in them. Um, it's kind of like the, uh, the axe murder chasing you kind of game, and uh, you've got to, like, hide from them and stuff. But the, the innovation was pretty incredible back then. I don't, I don't think they ever made... Uh, games similar to this, um, like in later years, but uh, I mean, there's probably a reason for that. But these are quite unique games, and I recommend you try it if you can. Maybe find them on an emulator because I, I mean, the prices that they go for now are are not worth it as as far as I'm concerned. Uh, another spooky game, Kodelka. Now this is the predecessor to, uh, what you got? there's some games on the PS2, oh, the Shadow Hearts series. This is, is kind of like the first one before the Shadow Hearts games came out on the PS2. And it still holds up, I, I just played this one for the first time a year ago or so too. And it's just got spooky vibes, you know, um, even, even for like the clumsy 3D graphics they had back then, it's still... It still holds up um, if, if you, you know, if you don't mind slightly dated graphics. But it's a fun game. I, I, I love these games that have uh, pre-rendered backgrounds, and it just looks like a painting that you're you're playing through. Now that's also similar with this game, Gallerians. Now I played Gallerians back in uh, high school, I think. Let's see when it came out. Oh, 2000. So I would have been in college then. But I got a copied version of this game back then, and it is disturbing. You're like a, a young boy in it. You're like 10 years old or 12 years old, something like that. 
and you have like experiments done on you or, or something like that, <laughs> and you, your like psychic power makes people just explode with blood. It's it's pretty gory, and um, I think it's one of those games that uh, parents maybe bought for their kids just didn't know any better. It is not a kid friendly game. Uh, even though it's got, you know, some kind of angsty looking teenager on the front. But uh, that was PS1. And also, uh, this is probably the game I'd recommend the most if you're looking for kind of like a spooky horror type of game. Uh, it's kind of like a vampire-esque game. And uh, it's not that expensive still. You can get it probably for around 10 or $15 easily on eBay. And I'd, I'd say it's totally worth that price. I'd, I'd easily pay $30, $40 for this game. Just be, I also have a nostalgia for it, but it's just a quality game. The controls are very good. It's, it's something you wouldn't expect PlayStation to be able to do back then. So, yeah, Legacy of Cain, Soul Reaver. Pick it up if you have not played it. Highly recommend it. If you like uh, kind of spooky gothic horror games, well, I don't know if it's gothic, but... It's pretty cool. And uh, let's see what else I got here. Oh, we'll go back to uh, Ridge Racer 4. This is Ridge Racer 4, and it is probably the best like arcade uh, racing game on the PS1. And it's got great music. Um, as, as far as a uh, racing game, I'm kind of more partial to the sim games, but this one is really fun if you kind of just like arcade style racing and uh, you can like drift around corners a little bit and it's got like, it's got a good little racing engine if you, if you like, uh, if you like racers. And another th cool thing they did with this was they made a special controller for this game. Now this is my play copy. This is kind of my copy that I just keep on the shelf because it is still sealed inside. And uh, one cool thing was they used to make uh, special controllers for games. This one was called the JogCon. And I mean, to be honest, it doesn't really work all that great, but it's, a, it's kind of a fun idea that they played around with, you know, they make special controllers for, uh, for the games. Um, I guess they still kind of do that with like Guitar Hero and whatnot, but I think it would be f fun if more companies did this today. Uh, you know, just kind of experiment like that and just new, new ideas. Uh, what else? Oh, speaking of racing games, these are probably my favorite racing games on the PS1. These are the Gran Turismo games. And uh, I highly recommend them as well if you like sim games. Um, when I was in high school, I remember we got these and it was like the first time that I'd seen an actual like simulation racing game on a on a system at all, um, and it was pretty amazing back then. I don't know how well they hold up today. It's it's still a little uh, I don't know. It looks a little dated if you're trying it out today. But the cars handle surprisingly well, um, you know, for for the era this game came out with. And you can build build all the cars. You can put different engines in them, or you know, soup them up and whatnot. And uh, I'd say 2 is probably a lot better than the, the first one, just because they made, I think they put more actual cars in Gran Turismo 2 than like any other Gran Turismo game has. So, you know, if you like those older kind of 90s cars and before, uh, that is the one to get. You, you'll find all kinds, of, all kinds of cars on there. And, um, well, the racing's still fun. Um, and these games are dirt cheap too. If you if you see a nice copy, you can pick it up easily for under ten dollars, and I recommend it. What else we got here? Just some kind of uh, some titles people might not think about. This is actually a really well-made wrestling game. Um, I played SmackDown, uh, the original version. Wasn't that impressed? When they made this one, everything was just a lot tighter, and I remember, like, the controls were really good. You can, you know, do all the specials pretty easily. And uh, my friends and I in college played this for hours and hours and hours because we were in the WWF back then. 
So it was is some good times. And I've played this, uh, you know, recently, and the nostalgia is high on this one. If if you remember the old, you know, '90s WWF wrestling with The Rock and Stone Cold and all those guys. But I recommend this one. This is another dirt cheap game you can pick up. Uh, I, I don't know how much it is. Under 10, I'm sure. Here's another dirt cheap game that I recommend. Uh, Machine Hunter. This one is kind of, it looks like a totally generic game. And at times it kind of feels like one too, but it is totally worth the uh, money if you find a nice copy of it. It's kind of like a run and gun overhead style game. And it's kind of unique, that I think, because it's kind of like a twin stick shooter. You have one, one stick uh, controlling, you know, the guy running up and down on the screen and whatnot, and the other screen, the other stick has, you know, control switch direction you're shooting in. So it's kind of interesting. I've never seen another PS1 game do this, and um, I recommend this one too. It's got kind of a nice soundtrack too, and you can. Pop out the disc out of your PlayStation and, and bring it in your car if you want to. It's one of those old games with the soundtrack already on the disc. What else? I think this might be my last one. Uh, we got Ghost in the Shell. And this one is uh, kind of nostalgic for me because I liked uh, Ghost in the Shell back in the day, but uh, it's also a very well made game. Um, the 3D aspects are, are pretty good. You can you control this little tank here and you can you know strafe around and slide up buildings and go you can go anywhere and you can you know, hang upside down and shoot people. It's it's pretty good. Um, and this one is a little more expensive today, I think, but if you see it, I if you like Ghost in the Shell, especially, I, I definitely recommend this one. Um, I also have the Ghost in the Shell game for PS2. It, this one's a lot better, uh, even though it's you know older and the graphics are crummier. It's just a lot better game put together, and it's got more of that Ghost in the Shell feel uh, from back in the day. What else? Uh, that's probably it for now. I'm I'm thinking I probably will not buy the PS One Mini when it comes out. I think it's a good idea for you know people that uh, maybe. You, don't have any PS1 games anymore and they just want to, you know, pick it up and, and play some of those old games again. I think that's a really smart move by Sony, especially, uh, you know, considering how good the Nintendos are selling. Hopefully they make a lot more of the units than, than Nintendo did. I'm sure they will. Sony's got a little better business sense, I think. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I'll get one, I, unless there's like some really bizarre game on there that I just don't have. Because this is a, this is the only PS1 Mini I need. This is, is uh, actually the second generation of PS1 that came out, and you even got a little screen on it so you can travel around with it if you want. But uh, that's pretty much it, I think, for this video. I just want to talk a little bit about my memories, and it probably took way too long. But <laughs> thanks for checking in, and um, I'll see you guys uh, on the next video. Thanks a lot.